the national anthem. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for a wonderful day. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for genuine mercies. Thank you for all these people you have mobilized to come here this morning. Thank you that you are going to be in our midst and our program will be successful. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, shall we take our seat respectfully? Your Excellency, Nana Dudankwa Ekufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana and the Commander in Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, Your Lordship Victor Jones Maulam Doche, the Deputy Minister of Education, Reverend Intim Fodjuo, Honorable Members of States, Regional Minister Dr. Archibald Yao Lecha, Togbi Kwakufia, Paramount Chief of the Sokode Traditional Area, Togbi Kojodo, Chief of Sokode Lokwe, Togbi Teprehodo, the fourth President of the Volta Regional House of Chiefs, members of the Diplomatic Corps, if any, Honorable Members of Parliament, Municipal and District Chief Executives, members of the University Council, Vice Chancellor Professor John. Ousu Japan, incoming Vice Chancellor Professor Lydia Aziato, members of convocation and staff of UHAS, Togbio Mamao, members of the media, distinguished and invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is such an honor and privilege for me to host this grand debate, marking the final of the 10th anniversary celebrations. Indeed, UHAS has come this far by grace and we are thankful to God Almighty for his grace and mercies. It is my honor to welcome all of you from far and near to this university and to this gathering. We are exceptionally delighted to have the President of the Republic of Ghana this morning again, and we welcome you specially for visiting us once again. Mr. President, don't mind our colleagues who are jealous of us that you keep visiting us, because you will visit us again in August. Your Excellency. Wazo, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Your Excellency, the chairman for this morning's Grand Deba is no other person than Your Lordship Justice Victor Jones, Maulam Doche. Your Lordship Chair is a Justice of the Supreme Court of Ghana and the current Chairman of the University Council. First appointed as Council Chair in December 2017 and reappointed in July 2021 by His Excellency the President. Distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to respectfully invite the Chairman of Council to present his welcome address. I will be emceeing this program. My name is Dr. Cynthia Sena Peglo, the registrar of this university, 1st July, 2022. <laughs> Good
Good morning and thank you, Registrar, for those nice words. His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Kufado, President of the Republic of Ghana and Commander in Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. Honorable Deputy Minister of Education, Reverend Tim Fojo, other Ministers of State, Voter Regional Minister, Dr. Achibo Yao Lecha, Togwe Teprehodo, the fourth President of the Voter Regional House of Chiefs, Togwe Kwakufia, the third Paramount Chief of Sokode Traditional Area, Togwe Kojudu, the third Chief of Sokode Lokwe, our landlords, members of the Members of Parliament, especially our MP, Honorable Kuru, MP for Ho Central, Municipal and District Chief Executives, members of the University Council, Vice Chancellor Professor John Ousu Japon, incoming Vice Chancellor Professor Lydia Aziato, members of our Convocation and Staff of UHAS, Togweo Mamao, Media, Distinguished Invited Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. In my capacity as Chairman of Council and on Council's behalf, I welcome all of you to this significant 10th anniversary celebrations of UHAS. The university was established by the University of Health and Allied Sciences Act 2011, Act 828, as a, as a preeminent research and practically oriented health educational institution dedicated solely to training health professionals and to engage in community service during the tenure of our late president, Professor John Evans Atamiels, of blessed memory. But it actually started functioning in the year 2012, hence 2022 is our 10th anniversary. It is with great pride and excitement to learn that the aims and objectives that were stated in the constitutive acts of the university have been successively pursued with admiration out as you will soon be informed by our special guest of honor, His Excellency, the President of the Republic, and the Vice Chancellor, Professor John Ousu Japon. Even though the commencement of the university was very shaky, today, UHAS can boast of many achievements. Notable among them is the fact that we now have a total student population of 7,678 from the first enrollment of 154 students 10 years ago. We have also held six congregations, among them our first and second batch of medical doctors who are reportedly doing very well, in addition to over 5,000 health and allied professionals that we have graduated over the period. Our staff strength is 891, made up as follows. 387 senior members, 224 senior staff, and 280 junior staff, respectively. The university currently runs a total of 19 undergraduate programs and nine postgraduate programs in the 34 departments of the university. As an institution, we are very grateful for the massive support and encouragement that you have received from the government of His Excellency the President. This lies in the award of the access and internal rules to Mrs. First Kai, who have worked to improve the access road to the university and are preparing to embark upon the internal rules when funds are released. The government has also facilitated the 68 million US dollars China Phase 2 project, which the president was generous enough to personally cut the sword in September last year. In addition, the counterpart fund of 6.2 million cities has been made available by the government for the preliminary works, such as extension of electricity, water, construction of storm and waste drains, etc., to facilitate the execution of the main project, which is advancing steadily. The Vice Chancellor will highlight on this project, and given the time, the constraints of time, I will take His Excellency and other dignitaries round to see the progress of work, which is scheduled to be completed in April 2024. Your Excellency, distinguished invited guests, let me express our appreciation to the chiefs and people of Sokode, our landlords of the main campus, Adakro Kojobi, Asogri State, Bin, Fodome, and Helenfi, 
who have all made land available to the investee. I also wish to thank the Voter Regional House of Chiefs for their support and interest in the affairs of the investee. Your Excellency, it is perhaps appropriate at this stage to acknowledge with pride the work of the first U House Council, particularly its chairman, Professor Kofi Anidoho, and the following founding officers, Professor Fred Binka, founding vice chancellor, Professor Edwin Wiredu, founding pro vice chancellor, Mr. Kofi Siabi Mensa, founding registrar, charity Jomeku, founding director of finance, late Teofilos Yeboa, Liberian Bernard Akaba, director of West and fiscal development, late Emmanuel Obey Ajay, CITO director, and many others, two numerous to be recounted here, and groups who helped in shaping what you has is today. However, I have to mention and acknowledge the work of Professor Sefa Dede and Dr. Christine Amwaku Nwama for their role in the establishment of UHAS. Apart from the government and people of China who have been of immense assistance in the infrastructural development of the university, let me also acknowledge our own government and the following institutions in their efforts in ensuring the infrastructural deficit is reduced on the UHAS campus. These institutions are GetFund, Bank of Ghana, who donated this beautiful auditorium to us, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Education, GCB Bank, the Ghana Health Service and East Regional Directorate, the Teaching Hospital in Ho, Volta Regional Coordinating Council, and the whole Municipal Assembly, just to mention a few. Whilst thanking God for his abundant mercies and grace, which has seen you have through its developmental stages to this 10th anniversary, it is also important to inform all and sundry about recent events that have taken place in New House where the old order changes giving birth to the new. In the next couple of days, specifically July 31st, 2022, the tenure of the two key officers, the Vice Chancellor and the Registrar, will come to an end. A search committee was constituted and inaugurated on 10th March 2022 in accordance with the investee statutes to identify to identify suitable persons to be appointed as the new vice chancellor and registrar. The search committees completed their work and submitted their reports to the investee council. The work of the council was made relatively easier since the recommendations of the two search committees were clear and straightforward. At its meeting of June 3rd, 2022, two new officers were appointed by the council to replace the outgoing officers. Professor Lydia Azerto was appointed as Pro Vice Chancellor and Ms. Ya Amankwa Opuni as Registrar. Your Excellency, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, you will bear me out that the outgoing officers, Professors Japo and Dr. Sena Peglo, have performed excellently during their tenure such that the university has continued to soar and progress without any records or disruption in academic work. In fact, Mr. President, I'm sure that you have not lost any sleep over issues concerning you has since you took office, which is a very good thing. The experience and expertise they brought on board has enabled the university to build on the foundation structures and processes to progress accordingly. Whilst the Vice Chancellor has utilized his expertise as an internationally acclaimed medical and public health research scientist to enhance the research prowess and mandate of the university these past six years, the Registrar has continued to successfully perform the day-to-day -day administrative duties necessary for the smooth running of the entity and successfully implemented management decisions to maintain the integrity of the university for the near eight years since she assumed office. The combined efforts of these officers and the good working relationships established with all the university's constituents is evident in the recognition of UHAS as a fast-growing competitive institution of higher learning in Ghana and beyond and captured in the recent university rankings. 
Many of the spectacular achievements within the previous years, and in particular the 2020-21 and 2021-22 academic years, will soon be highlighted by the Vice Chancellor as a reflective testimony of my accession. As Chairman of Council, I'm confident that with the expertise and experience of, that the new officers bring on board, you House will continue to excel in all activities. Your Excellency, Togbeo Mamao, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, the University Council continues to bask in excitement after having been ranked the first best Ghana by the Times Higher Education World Universities Impact Ranking in SDG3, second best in Ghana, and the 36th best university in Africa by Alpha Doga AD Scientific Index in the World Scientists and Investing Rankings 2021, beating some of the older institutions in Ghana. The ADs. The AD Scientific Index is a ranking and an analysis system based on the scientific performance and added value of the scientific productivity of individual scientists and institutions, taking into consideration the scientific characteristics of affiliated institutions and individuals. As if you had rankings in Africa and Ghana were not enough, some faculty of the university had some commendable rankings on the AD Scientific Index. Notable among them are the Foundation, uh, Foundation Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Fred Newton Binka, and the immediate past Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Seth Ousu Ajay, the current Vice Chancellor, Professor John Ousu Japon, the current Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Harry Tabor, the Director of Institute of Health Research, Professor Margaret Japon, Mr. Martin Aju, a lecturer with the School of Public Health, and Professor Evelyn Koko Ansa, Director of Center for Malaria Research. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my greatest pleasure to announce also that one of such eminent researchers in the university was adjudged the outstanding female scientist by the European Developing Countries Clinical Trials Partnership, EDTCP, for the 2021 year. Her prize money of 20,000 euros was donated by her to the university. Let's thank Professor Jaffer. <laughs> Council of this university recognized the achievements of Professor Margaret Japon and her kind gesture and awarded her with three awards, namely the institution of an annual mentorship program for female academics, a citation, and an honorary doctorate degree, respectively. For While Council congrat congratulates these individuals for hoisting the U.S. flag so high on the global stage, Council equally encourages other faculty and staff to endeavor to blaze the trail to leave the U.S. flag on the world map, especially within the global research community. It's, it, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, regarding infrastructural development and further expansion of U.S., the investment management had recently completed some residential facilities for students and they are being used since the inception of the 2020-2021 academic year. Our students can now boast of good accommodation facilities in very safe environments. The recent ones being constructed on the main campus will soon be ready for occupancy and we will respectively invite you to commission them today. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic, Togbeo Mamao, distinguished invited guests, it is my wish that government will appreciate the special skills development mandate of UHAS, as set out in Act 828, which we are determined to follow without diluting sin. The practice has always been that public universities deviate from their original mandate and go into other sectors to enrich themselves by adding some money to the IGF. This is the reason why UHAS does not want to go that route. We therefore need to be seriously assisted financially, Mr. President. We therefore call for continued government support to enable us carry out our mandate within the strictures of the law. We also crave your indulgence to ensure that 
funds are released to all contractors working on our projects like the Rose Central Laboratory and the academic and residential fa facilities to enable these projects and facilities to, complete it, to be completed on schedule. On behalf of the Council and the University as a whole, I welcome you and all other invited guests to this 10th anniversary celebrations of you has. Thank you. Shall we do the applause again, please? Your Excellency, it is worthy to note that Professor Margaret Jacob donated all the 20,000 euro. She donated it all <laughs> for the fund um, in these hard times, but congratulations and thank you. Shall we welcome uh, a musical interlude from the cultural troupe whilst our Vice Chancellor, Professor Japon, prepares to deliver um, the speech on how far we have come. Setting up an university and administering it is a very hard and arduous task. And so we are very much interested in listening to how it all happened and how we have done so far. Shall we welcome the cultural troupe?
present to us the 10 year journey of UHAS. Thank you very much. I will welcome him with a round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. I want to stand on the existing protocols established by my Chairman of Council and proceed. I have a very efficient Chairman of Council who is on top of issues such that he, he says it all. So I'll just confirm that what he said is true in pictures. <laughs> yes, Professor Evans at Mills had a dream to establish this university and it started. As he indicated, there were some shaky roads at a point in time. Um, in February 2011, uh, a sword cutting ceremony was held, very well attended by the chiefs and people, and very much facilitated by the Volta Regional Coordinating Council. There were very key people who played a role in doing all this. But after February, everything went to sleep. So everybody was complaining, what is happening? And then the cartoons started. Um, Holegon and uh, admissions in progress. And uh, the snakes and everybody were coming for admission. But I, I make this as an important point. Because the Act of Parliament, which establishes the university, was passed in December 2011. So sometimes we get a bit ahead of ourselves uh, because of zeal and uh, the things that we want to do. Um, I'm not a politician, so I try to say what I know. And the Act of Parliament came into being, so it facilitated the establishment of the university. There was a change of guard at the Volta Regional Coordinating Council. They started mobilizing. They renovated some old buildings. Um, this, is, this is the Vice Chancellor's Lodge. There's a similar one which is occupied by the Pro Vice Chancellor. But everybody was putting their shoulders to the wheel, all hands on deck. Some abandoned facilities were mobilized and monies were found from all over the place, except that what we heard was that all the contracts were awarded in Accra. Honorable Kujeta Blackwell, I didn't see anything. And then other facilities were brought on board to get this university going. A few uh, new structures were put up. This is the uh, auditorium at the hospital campus. Uh, we started using it even before it was ready because uh, we needed to get going. And then we had to get a place for our students to eat. So this was where our students were buying food to eat. A few bungalows were put up there and then uh, some senior members started coming on board. Not too long after that, some mobilization was done at Hohoe visiting the, uh, the Gui Traditional Council to seek their support because, as you know, the Act of Parliament says that the university shall be established in Ho and Hohoi and any other place that will be determined by council. So that mobilization also began. Some construction uh, began, and then we had these uh, facilities, uh, some of which were donated by the uh, Volta, sorry, the Uncle Sakasis Control Center in Hohoe uh, to make things happen. Bottom line is that everybody was putting their shoulder to the wheel. So in 2012, uh, the first uh, matriculation was held. And I like this poster so much because I realized that the MCEs 
contributed something. Today I saw a lot of MMDCs coming to welcome the president, but I haven't received anything from them. <laughs> so we, we will be taking the background. His Excellency the Vice President was present to grace the occasion. The matriculation oath was administered by the first registrar. Everybody was excited and happy that something that was a dream was beginning to bear fruit. To put the seal of approval, the big people as far as health was concerned uh, came. So you have Professor, Reverend Professor Setaite, uh, Professor Cliff Tego, uh, even uh, uh, I think that is, that must be some Okujeto also there. And uh, many, many other big people came to give approval. There was a small facility that was built for the students to, to stay in. And then a loan was facilitated and the president came to cut sword uh, uh, for the construction of this permanent site where we find ourselves. They had to do a lot of soil testing and a lot of infrastructure work was done to ensure that the buildings were put up in record time. So at the end of the day, this is what we got. And uh, so this is the first phase of the development of this campus. And there was a grant of $20 million to get this done. So in July 2016, uh, the first congregation was held. I was privileged to attend as the Pro Vice Chancellor from University of Ghana. But not too long after that, there was a change of baton. So I took over. And we had to ensure that the foundations that had been built were built upon properly. As the scripture says, now if anyone builds on this foundation, with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. I believe at the end of the day, we'll all be able to assess what it is that we've been able to put on that foundation. So we came and continued the process. The statues that have been developed, we had to finalize it with the wisdom and guidance of our chairman of council. Uh, we finalized our statutes. So now we have the U.S. Fundamental Laws, which is a compendium of the Act of Parliament and the statutes that establish this university. We had to develop many statutes, sorry, many policies and guidelines to help in the governance of this university. And again, our chairman, being a very astute uh, member of the bench, uh, was very helpful. We had to develop policies on diversity and inclusion. Uh, we had to develop our financial policies and guidelines for operations, IP policies, our internal audit charter, our research policy, name them including sexual harassment policies. And uh, our transport policy was the last one that was approved by council not too long ago. In addition to that, we developed a strategic plan to guide our pathway, how we're going to run. And this strategic uh, plan has four key ethos and values which we subscribe to. Excellence, innovation, integrity, and service and care. And throughout this period, we've been trying to ensure that all our students who pass through this place get these values. Then the teaching hospital issue came up. It had been started by the previous administration and uh, we had to push it uh, by calling as many people as possible to ensure that it really did happen. So at the end of the day, the Minister of Health came over and there was a good ceremony and everybody knew that now the Volta Regional Hospital was the whole teaching hospital. So to put a seal of approval, 
Unfortunately, the infrastructure there was not good enough. The university had to uh, find some money to build consulting rooms to help in the training of our clinical students. Because without that, we could not train our clinical students. We needed to put up some lecture rooms on the campus of the hospital to ensure that teaching and learning happen without any challenges or hitches. We also realized that our population was growing. And uh, before uh, Professor Binka left, they had started the engagement with the Bank of Ghana to provide uh, resources for this CD auditorium. Um, they provided four million under his tenure, and then when I came, we managed to get another four million, making a total of eight million. So we are forever grateful to Bank of Ghana for donating this auditorium to us. And then through the regional minister, we started courting the interest of the president. So when the regional, the president was coming on his regional tour, I spoke to the regional minister and he put uh, us on the schedule. So the president came and I showed him our model. And I said, only one out of the 11 schools and institutes have been built. Then he said, it is a long way, but Rome was not built in a day, but it was built. So we will build it. And that gave me hope. So the president came around. He uh, accompanied us to inspect a few facilities. He addressed us in this auditorium. And we're all very excited. Uh, but the things were slow in coming. Uh, but, uh, well, you know, we know I understand governance issues. So our roads, this is how it used to look like. Those of you who came today and you are complaining, this is what we were driving on. So uh, in 2020, he came and cut sword uh, for Fair Sky to come back to site and uh, get things done. Uh, so we've reached a stage. Now I've learned a few of the terminology. What we need now is the concrete base and then the asphalt will go onto it. So Your Excellency, we beseech you by the mercies of God, make this happen for us. I will be very happy. Then we started engaging him again about a second phase of this campus. Um, a little bird told us that some Chinese grants were coming in. So we lobbied from all angles. And uh, once we secured the interest of the, the consent of the Minister of Finance, we knew we were in very good shape. So in 2019, January, they signed a, a memorandum of understanding uh, with the Chinese government. And then we went through the process of developing all the documentation and the designs. And at this stage, I want to say a very big thank you for my development team. They've been excellent. Without them, I don't know how I would have gone through this. They have been excellent. So we developed everything, and then we went to China to sign off the drawings. And COVID hit. So there was a freeze. If it hadn't been for COVID, the buildings I'm talking about would have been completed. Unfortunately, COVID hit, 2019. So two years later, which was September last year, His Excellency came again to cut sword for the beginning of the construction of the second phase, which is a $60 million grant, which is three times what we have here. At the end of the day, this is what we're going to have there. Our School of Nursing and Midwifery, which is the biggest in Sub-Saharan Africa, and our central administration. So this is what we anticipate that we will be seeing. And over a very short period of nine months, there's been so much development that we are all in awe and amazed at what is going on. Um, the Chinese have their own way of working. Uh, we said, you know, we need the classrooms. Can you finish it for us so that they won't even listen? Uh, because they have a plan, they get to a certain stage, then the uh, people have to come from China to come and check some boxes and all that before we can move on. Anyway, they have promised that in April 2024, actually in March 2024, the buildings will be ready. And we will have 
classrooms that seat 2,500 students at a go. <clears throat> So I've been telling the students that the carrying of chairs will, will, will cease. Uh, so this is where we are. This is why we think that there is something good to celebrate in this university. So we are in our 10th anniversary, and uh, our 11 academic units, nine have been functioning uh, to a very large extent. We started our dentistry program this year. We recruited 11 students to start our dentistry program. It is being incubated by the uh, School of Medicine. But we decided that the next vice chancellor must have something to do. So we have left the Institute of Medical Education for the next vice chancellor to come and establish. <laughs> UHAS is one of two universities where the schools and institutes that we're supposed to have were crafted into the Act of Parliament. So there are 11 of them. This is the minimum. I believe there is the opportunity that we can go beyond that. Chairman of Council have already indicated what our numbers are now. We started with 154. Now we have over 7,000 uh, with that divide around uh, regular and uh, sandwich students. And these are the students that we have graduated. So currently we have graduated over 5,000 health professionals who are working in this system. And we are not just graduating students. We have students who are doing exceptionally well. One of them, uh, through her work, was invited to the UN General Assembly in 2019. Uh, and we were very excited that she had the opportunity to pose and take photos with the Nobel uh, Laureate. And uh, we are very, very, very excited about these developments because it tells that we are not just graduating students, but the quality of the students we are graduating is exceptionally high. <laughs> Dr. Christina Makuniyama sent me this message last year. I recently met four of your babies, in quotes, in the X-ray department of 37 on their clinicals. So, so proud of them because of their excellent demeanor and behavior towards patients. Wow, such good ambassadors. None of the cockiness of today's young health professionals. But then, I don't expect anything else from your trainees. Thank you for making us proud once more. So we've introduced new programs, orthotics and prosthetics. Indeed, this is the only program at the bachelor's level in sub-Saharan Africa. There is none. We've introduced our sports and next size medicine program, and we are working very closely with the All-African Games to partner them in the games that is going to come up. I already mentioned to you that we started our dentistry program this year. We've also started our graduate programs uh, from the master's to the graduate level, uh, sorry, to the PhD level, and uh, our nursing uh, MPhil studies are going to start next academic year, and the pharmaceutical uh, sciences are also going to start next academic year. So there is a lot on the plate now. My chairman talked about university rankings. In 2017, UHAS was ranked number 27 in Ghana. In 2021, we had moved very much to the top, to uh, the 10th. I told my people that before I leave, we should be in the top five. But I have two weeks to go. <laughs> and I don't know how I'm going to jump into the top five. My chairman mentioned this, uh, the fact that we dominated the rankings, I mean, on our scientific output. This is talking about scientific output of individuals. And uh, it was great. Uh, again, he mentioned that there were some in the top 50 scientists in Ghana. Number two was from UHAS. Number three was from UHAS. Number four was from UHAS. Number 11 was from UHAS. And in the top 50, UHAS had 10. We are only 10 years old. 
Therefore, it is not surprising that our director of Institute for uh, Health Research received the 2021 EDCCP Most Outstanding Female Scientist Award. And they talked about some 20,000 euro. I wish that 20,000 euro had remained in our bank account. <laughs> but it was donated. Chairman also re referred to the Times Higher Education. And in Ghana, as far as SDG 3, which looks at health, is concerned, UHAS was ranked number one. We have not just been doing research and being at our books. We've also been providing community service when relevant. When COVID broke, Your Excellency, I recall very much on your uh, meet, uh, the, what did you call it? The fellow Ghanaian speeches of, uh, <laughs> of, of <laughs> I, I remember very well, of 27th April, you announced that you has, will start testing. And indeed, we started testing. And we have been testing for Volta, OT, and parts of Eastern region. And there were many people who were very skeptical as to whether we could do it. But our small team got together and did it and provided the relevance to this community. And there were some four people, you know, when you pick and choose, you run into trouble but I can't help it. There were some four people who were on top of this. They were running around like headless chickens, and they got it done. So I want to say thank you to them again. <laughs> My only challenge is that our vaccination drive has been very low. Your Excellency, you have provided all the resources to provide the vaccines for us. Currently, this is at, at the end of June, and sorry, at the end of May, and uh, as far as the first vaccination was concerned, at the national level, we were doing only 47%. And at, as far as those who were, as it were, fully immunized, have received the two doses, we are 27%. But unfortunately, Volta region is at the last point of the ladder. For single vaccination, we're talking about 21%, and for uh, fully vaccination, is a poultry 12%. I beseech you by the message of God that I am vaccinated, so you too get vaccinated. Because that is the only way that we can break this problem at its back. We've been recognizing people who have been so supportive of us. So we built a hall of residence And because of the partnership that we've had with the people of Asogli for donating or facilitating the initiation of the university, we decided to name this hall the Asogli Hall. It's a 680-bed facility, uh, which commissioned this uh, afternoon after our ceremony here. And we decided to name it the Sokode Hall, uh, just to recognize the people of Sokode also for, for their contribution. Uh, for providing us, <coughs> excuse me, with the land to get things going. So Sokode Hall will be inaugurated this afternoon. Um, for our first chairman of council, we decided to refurbish the first auditorium that we had and call it Daniel uh, Auditorium. And uh, it's very well refurbished, very nice, and very befitting. Uh, these are recognizing people who have made substantial contributions. Uh, School of Public Health, we decided to recognize our foundation vice chancellor and name it the Professor Fred Binker School of Public Health. But we wish that we will move from these tents into the permanent facilities, which is about 70% complete. Your Excellency, when you visited in September, we welcomed you there and you saw what was going on there. Uh, we pray that this will be done very quickly. Our central laboratory, which is to my left and to the right of many of you, if we were to complete it, we could double our intake. But this has been our bane. If we don't have the right infrastructure, we cannot double our intake to receive the free senior high school students who are always knocking on our doors. Chairman has already talked about staff numbers, so I'll just skip that. But for me, the more important thing is that because of these we have had to invest in other issues which somebody may say is not our core business. 
we've had to build a basic school to take care of our staff. It's a first class basic school and everybody in who wants to bring their children there. Unfortunately, we cannot admit all of them. For that reason, the vice chancellor is the bad man. Uh, I hope when I leave, they don't fill those classrooms with, with so many students. But uh, it means we need to expand. So we see ourselves as a great giant that is so rising. That is why we chose this as our theme for our anniversary. And uh, we've been on the route, uh, enjoying ourselves uh, in Hohoi and in Ho, dancing in the streets of Ho, and making speeches all over the place uh, because we think we have something to celebrate. Uh, our people and our benefactors have all been very, very, very supportive. Uh, the Deputy Minister for Health was here with us to celebrate. Uh, when we were marching, our good friend, uh, I think we should make Koko Anidoh a, a part-time lecturer here. <laughs> he, he attends almost every function. He was in the streets with us. And then we had our leadership lecture series to commemorate um, uh, the uh, works of uh, His Excellency, the late J.E.A. Mills. This was delivered by uh, the man everybody called Mr. Zoom Lion. He gave a very, very good lecture on how we could partner industry. After that, we had our congregation, and then two weeks ago, we had our international day where we brought everybody who uh, comes from outside Ghana and has associations with the university on board to participate. So, Mr. President, Your Excellency, today, UHAS is a household brand, and everybody wants to be associated with UHAS now. All I want to say is that we should never discourage anyone who continues to make progress even if it is slow. This is what Plato said, and I believe so much in it, and that we should not despise our humble beginnings. We came from very humble beginnings, and uh, I believe that great things and greater things are ahead of us. The Bible says in Job chapter 8, verse 7, that your beginnings will seem humble, so prosperous will your future be. So we, we know we have a long way to go and we have bigger things to do. But along the way, it hasn't been as smooth as I've made it sound. We have had many, 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 many distractions, sometimes very, very uh, worrying, and not just in my term, uh, but in Professor Binka's term. Sometimes when we talk about some of our experiences, we wonder why certain things do happen. But we have remained focused. We have really remained focused. Because Winston Churchill said, you will never reach your destination if you stop to throw stones at every dog that backs at you. So we will not be perturbed. We will move forward in very, very focused manner. Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So neither he who plants nor he who waters anything is anything but only God who makes things grow. So we recognize that it is just by the grace of God that we've come this far. For that reason and for the many things that I've said, we know that the University of Health and Allied Sciences is in a very good state today because we have remained focused and we have avoided mission creep, which the chairman of council uh, alluded to, because we believe that specialized universities are essential for national development. This is the University of Health and Allied Sciences, and we shall remain a university of health and allied sciences. So just as the baton changed in uh, 2016, three of us are moving on again, and the baton is going to change. And I want to take this opportunity to congratulate the three incoming persons. We believe 
that you give them all the support that you have given us so that they can also succeed. Because for us, it was just an opportunity to serve. And on that, I thank you for your attention. Shall we applaud better, please? You has is a household brand, great giants rising. We have come a long way and we thank God for that. Thank you, Vice Chancellor, for leading the effort and guiding the process to help us arrive at where we are now. I have no doubt that the foundation laid by the founding Vice Chancellor and what you build upon will enable those who are coming in also to continue the process. Thank you once again. Shall we applaud for the wonderful things that has happened to you? We will have a musical interlude from, we will have a UHAS 10th anniversary song from the university choir. The choir was established in 2016 and it is directed by Mr. Kenneth Chinyo. Mr. Kenneth Chinyo is a quantity surveyor. As to what he is doing in the music industry, I have no idea. <laughs> he will give us one, the choir will give us, it's a you has 10th anniversary song. So we will do that quickly so that we can continue. We know that um, we have our eminent guest who will like to be on his way um, for other assignments. So let's do that briefly. Thank you. again. Thank you very much, choir. Your Excellency, my Lord Chair, we will now have some solidarity messages and speeches. I will um, caption it solidarity messages only, no speech. We, we, want, we are pressed for time. So we want to give each of these individuals um, a maximum of three minutes to, to say a few words. Um, the first on the list will be our Deputy Minister of Education, Reverend Intim Fodjo, who will give us a brief statement. Thank you. Reverend Intim Fodjo, please.
Thank you very much, Dadia Cynthia, for the introduction. His Excellency, the President of the Republic, the Chairman of Council, Justice Jones Victor Mawulom Doche, Members of Council, the Vice Chancellor of this University, Professor John Owusu Japon, and Vice Chancellors of Sister Universities, the incoming Vice Chancellor, the Registrar of the University, and registrars of sister universities are distinguished traditional rulers, members of parliament. I can recognize the member of parliament for North Tong, for Ho Central and Ho West, and all distinguished invited guests, members of convocation, junior members in statute populari, senior members in local parentis, and distinguished students of this university. Indeed, it gives me a great honor and pleasure to convey the warm compliment of the Minister for Education, Dr. Yawase Edutum, to, uh, to this great university on the attainment of 10 years of your stride in ensuring that you indeed rising as a giant that is competing with not only some of the best in the country, but the best in the sub region, and putting things in place to ensure that you announce yourselves on the world stage. Indeed, we are proud of the great contribution that you have enjoyed over the years with the strong support of all stakeholders, both past and present, and the leadership of this current Vice Chancellor, Chairman of Council, and the great contribution of the team that have ensured that 10 years, relatively a very short age, a very young age, but with a colossus output, accomplishment that we are very much proud of. Indeed, this is one of the universities that has very much and consistently focused on their original mandate, having raised over 5,000 some of the best medical doctors and health professionals we have in this country and the continent and beyond, making a difference in science, technology, and medical education. Indeed, this is very much in alignment with the government's commitment in expanding science and technology education. On this great day, we we convey our warm felicitations to you and to assure you of our continued partnership. I would like to truncate my message and to yield to the superior delivery of the man who believes in education, of the man who has been very instrumental in the expansion of UHAS and has been very supportive of the journey thus far, the man who has ensured that not only is UHAS moving forward and in line with the current trends and current details of the fourth industrial revolution, but ensuring that you, you has continues to become competitive, attracting some of the best. The man who believes in education, right from foundational learning, having committed to investing heavily and in ensuring that the Ghanaian child has the opportunity to quality education, right from kindergarten, primary, JHS, SHS, to the university having established the colossal and monumental free SHS policy, removing the systemic and economic barriers, and making sure that enrollment to secondary education is doubled, one of the most remarkable narratives we have in Africa. And at the tertiary level, having removed the no and ensured that access to tertiary funding is expanded to ensure that many more of our learners are able to continue their higher education this is the president that we are proud of today to be delivering the keynote address. Thank you very much, and I wish you a happy 10th anniversary. Hey, Reverend, make us a three minutes for Three minutes, but shall we uh, invite the member of parliament for Ho Central, Honorable Podo, who is a friend of the institution, to give us three minutes of solidarity message. Thank you. My time is so short that I want to stand on the existing protocols. But I cannot gloss over the president who I'm so happy is here. Anytime a president visits my constituency, I'm very happy. <laughs> so I, I acknowledge his presence, then the chairman of council and the vice chancellor. Uh, I have written a short statement there. 
which I'll just read over. I congratulate the University of Health and Allied Sciences on this 10th anniversary of existence. Not only the ordinary existence, but more significantly on the remarkable laurels that the institution has chalked within this relatively short space of time. We recall the struggle to get a state-owned university established in the Volta region. We are grateful that the government of Ghana under the presidency of the late H.E. John Evans Atamils decided to heed to our call by approving the establishment of UHAS in Ho, as well as sourcing funding for the project. We started from a humble beginning in the premises of Trafalgar Hospital. All hands were on deck. The chiefs and other senior citizens intervened to make it a success. Sometimes very hard pressures were exerted on government. I remember the uh, very continue with construction works. His Excellency President John Damani Mahama deserves commendation for helping to complete phase one of the project. And now, with the collaboration of the former president and the current president, we have the phase two ongoing. We salute the four best and the very active pioneer leaders of the institution, Professor Fred Binka and Professor John Japon, as well as Professor Kofi Anyuruhu and Justice VJ Maori Dote, Vice Chancellors and Council Chairman, respectively. We salute faculty and staff for their endearing roles in bringing the university up to its current standing. And now we welcome Professor Lydia Aziato to the seat to carry the institution to the next level. The university has lived up to its social responsibility role by promptly establishing the COVID-19 testing laboratory when that was most needed to serve Volta and Uti regions. I was here with Dr. Letcher when we inaugurated the laboratory. The institution has also been adjudged the best in Ghana in the Times Higher Education Impact Rankings 2022 in the SDG3 category based on research, outreach, and teaching. We further acknowledge the economic and social benefits of the presence of UHAS in whole municipality. Some economic activity has been enhanced. Indeed, we expect more and in the environs of the municipality and beyond, including Tanyibe, Akrofu, Takla, and so on. For, 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 for your information, the first council chairman is from Tanyibe. Professor Aniruhu. This is sure to expand when the project moves forward. Even as we celebrate the 10th anniversary, we cannot be oblivious of the existing needs of UHAS. There are more schools and faculties to be established. I call for conscious efforts to be made to speed up the process. On this special commemorative day, I wish the University of Health and Allied Sciences, UHAS, the best of progress and glory. And finally, I welcome the new Vice Chancellor with a donation of 2,000 United States dollars. for her to finish her office. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable. Please, may I have the 2,000? I will keep it for, I will keep it for the, the incoming VC. Thank you so much. Your Lord Chair, I wish to invite to the podium the Chairman of Vice Chancellors Ghana, Professor Abednego Oko. Amate to give us some few words. Shall we welcome him, please?
Your Excellency, um, a short message from Vice Chancellor Ghana. Vice Chancellor Ghana applauds the achievements and successes of UHAS as it celebrates the 10th anniversary of, the, of its existence. On behalf of the entire membership, we wish you well on this very important occasion. In the last 10 years, UHAS has grown from strength to strength, increasing student numbers, diversifying its programs, and improving the physical infrastructure to the admiration of all. We are proud to note that the UHAS has been a member of VCG almost from the date UHAS was founded, contributing its quota to the growth of the association and chairing VCG during the 2020-2021 academic year. Congratulations to the University of Health and Allied Sciences for its development into such a strong national institution and for taking the lead in the training of allied health professionals for our nation and the world at large. On behalf of my fellow vice chancellors and rectors, I applaud the past and present leadership, management, staff, and students of UHAS for the dedication and vision that has resulted in the achievements the university has made and the accolades UHAS has, deserved, has received. May this year's May the years ahead see the achievement of greater laurels for the University of Health and Allied Sciences. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Professor Mate. Professor Mate is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Professional Studies in Accra. I wish to invite the President of the Volta Regional House of Chiefs, Togbi Tepre to come and give us his message. Togbi was um, part of the last council of the university. We are excited to have him here this morning. Shall we welcome him? Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, and I stand on all other protocols, but uh, I must mention my colleague who is the present chair of council. On behalf of the Volta Region House of Chiefs and indeed all traditional rulers, I'd like to say a big aiko to the present and past leaders of this great institution. Some of us recall with uh, nostalgia how it all started. Professor Anino, who is here, we used to drive in the night to get to home just so we could start meetings early enough. Thank God it has all paid off. We are therefore very proud to be associated with this university, particularly as the owners of the lands on which you thrive. So, don't forget to pay us compensation when the time comes. <laughs> On that note, I wish to say congratulations to the University of Health and Allied Sciences, and we wish you more successes in the years ahead. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Togbi. Another round of applause. It's not every day you find them Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we have come to a very important part of our celebrations this morning. I wish to invite the Honorable Regional Minister, Dr. Archibald Yaolecha, to introduce our main speaker and guest of honor for this morning. I will, um, whilst he's doing the intro introduction, we will have the choir give us a little interlude as we prepare the podium and so on. This, this is a mega event and there is a procedure for it. So relax as we do what we have to do over here. 
So without much ado, um, Honorable Regional Minister, maybe you will give us a little message before you do the introduction so that this will be uh, done together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Registrar. Uh, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Rudankwa Kufado, uh, Chairman of Council, Members of Parliament, Honorable Deputy Minister for Education, uh, Honorable Minister of Chief Executives, the Vice Chancellor and Council Members of UHAS, the incoming Vice Chancellor, Professor Lydia Aziatu, Togbeo, Mamao, members of faculty, academic and non academic staff, students, members of the college, distinguished invited guests, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great privilege to introduce the guest of honor for this memorable occasion in the person of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana and the Commander in Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, Nana Adodankwa Kufaro. His Excellency, the President, has followed with keen interest the university's activities and progress since he took office in 2017. His Excellency constituted a second governing council of the university and appointed the current chairman, His Lordship Justice Victor Jones Maulong Doche. In addition, five government representatives were appointed to serve on the council in 2017 to consider and approve all the university's plans and programs to of the young university. In the latter part of 2018, His Excellency specifically scheduled to pay a visit to the university as part of his tour of the Volta region to acquaint himself with the developments and progress of the university. To ensure smooth access and open up the university and the rest of the region, His Excellency followed up again on September 1st, 2020, to cast sword for the construction of a 10.5 kilometer Sokodi to Titrinu bypass, which included a 5.3 kilometers of internal routes of the university, much to the delight of the and The president on a rainy Friday, Walter, asked you has again to cast sword for the commencement of the construction of the China Phase Two project, having secured a grant of about 60 million. Uh, dollars and from the Chinese government and uh, having approved a counterpart funding of 6.2 million Ghana cities for the project to start. His visits to UHAS have not been limited to Ho only. In fact, before his last visit, the president had inspected the progress of work for the construction of the administration block and lecture halls and offices at Fodome for the Huawei campus. The point I'm trying to make, ladies and gentlemen, is that the President, His Excellency, is an avid supporter of UHAS. <laughs> and is very determined to facilitate UHAS's de developmental agenda and intellectual impact in the health sector. I'm not surprised that and intentional about his visit to UHAS today. Your Excellency, it is always a delight for me and a privilege to have you here in the region and to introduce you once again. Distinguished guests, I present to you His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana and the Commander in Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, Nana Dodanko Akufado. Thank you. Walter Regional Minister. <laughs> the Deputy Minister for Education and Member of Parliament for Asin South. The Member of Parliament for Ho Central. The Member of Parliament for North Tongu. And the Member of Parliament for Ho West. Municipal Chief Executive for the whole municipal assembly, the chairperson and members of the governing council of the University of Health and Allied Sciences, vice chancellor, pro-vice chancellor, registrar, faculty, 
staff and alumni of the University of Health and Allied Scientists, the Chair, Vice Chancellors Ghana, the President and members of the Volta Regional House of Chiefs and other traditional rulers, residents of Ho, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ten months ago, I was here on September the 10th at the University of Health and Allied Sciences to cut the sword for the commencement of work for the Phase II expansion project. It was a momentous occasion, and I'm happy that the infrastructural development to be derived from Phase II was initiated by the government of Nanado Dankwa Akufuado. It has been 10 years already since the establishment of this university, and who would have thought it would grow to such strength in so short a time? Since I became president of the Republic, I have seen UHAS set high standards of behavior and promote the traditional values which underpin lifelong learning and achievement. I've witnessed how UHAS has flourished and achieved tremendous academic success. I'm particularly delighted that UHAS is pursuing aggressively the realization of its agenda of becoming our nation's preeminent health learning and teaching institution, dedicated to research and community service. The evidence is in the great strides it has chalked in health research. It being ranked amongst the top three universities in Ghana, and also being named number one in the Times Higher Education Impact Rankings 2022 in the SDG 3 category in Ghana. From humble beginnings, as we have been told, U.S. now boasts of a student population of some 7,688, spread across seven schools, and having a staff population of some 891. UHAS has come a long way, and undoubtedly, it has become bigger than was envisaged, attracting international attention and recognition for the achievement of excellence. Congratulations are very much in order, UHAS. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when I came here to cut the sword for phase two of the exam, expansion project to start. I did so in recognition of the fact that in spite of the initial infrastructural development bequeathed to the university, it was obvious that more needed to be done if it was to be able to deliver effectively on its mandate. Upon my instruction, the Ministers for Education and Finance, working together with the management of the university on the request made by the Vice-Chancellor Professor John Ousu Japan secured funding to the tune of $60 million from the Chinese government. The government and the people of Ghana are grateful to President Xi Jinping, the government and people of the People's Republic of China, for the continued growth of the bilateral relations that exist between our two countries. I must perforce recognize the efforts of the Chinese ambassador to Ghana, His Excellency Lu Kun, and the contractors, Nanton Sijian Construction Group, for their commendable contribution, which is leading us to this magnitude of infrastructural development currently ongoing in the university. As a demonstration of our commitment to this project, government has made available 6.2 million CDs of counterpart funding for the preliminary works, which covers extension of electricity, municipal water supply, construction of storm and waste drains, and all ancillary services required for the project in implementation. Eight months on, I'm happy to know that the phase two project, which will accommodate the central administration of the university and the School of Nursing and Midwifery, is progressing steadily according to schedule. Some 63% of work has been completed, 
36, please excuse me, some 36% of work has been concluded. And at this rate, I'm convinced that work will be completed on time. In April 2024, God willing, I'll be here to commission the projects under phase two. I commend the University Council under the auspices of its chairperson, the highly respected Supreme Court Justice, Jones Duce, JSC, and the April Vice Chancellor, Professor John Ajipong, Japon, for their judicious use of internally generated funds to complement government's efforts to help close the infrastructure deficit in the university. The ability of the University Council and management to construct eight blocks of ultra-modern student housing with the 1,400 bed capacity in a secure environment on campus is laudable and worthy of commendation and emulation by other schools of learning. I must also thank the former chairperson of the council, Professor Kofi Anidoho, and all past and present members of the council for guiding the steps of this council to date. I acknowledge the efforts of Professor Fred Binka for his hard work and dedication. To the many founding fathers of the university, including Professor Edwin Redu, founding Pro Vice Chancellor, Mr. Kofi Siaba Mensa, founding registrar, Madam Char Charity Jomeku, founding director of finance, the late Theophilus Yabua, the founding librarian, Mr. Bernard Akaba, founding director of works and physical development, the late Emmanuel Obinga J, founding director of ICT, and many others in the various categories who are part of the establishment process. I congratulate you on your work. They are to be warmly commended for the roles they have played in their lifetime and for those who have passed on to eternal glory to be posthumously recognized for their efforts in helping build UHAS. I cannot end this roll call without the mention of my contemporary and friend at the University of Ghana, Legon the third president of the Fourth Republic, the late Professor John Evans Atta Mills, whose progressive vision led to the setting up of this university. <laughs> I'm happy to learn that UHAS's 10th anniversary began with the naming of some facilities in honor of the founders, that is the Fred Binka School of Public Health in Hohoi and the Professor Anido Ho Auditorium in Ho. It appears you have more fame as a chancellor than as a poet, but both of them go to your credit and your congratulations on this achievement. I've also been informed of the naming of two newly built student residences at Sogli and Sokodi Halls. I think that the gesture is very thoughtful and admirable of your institution. Indeed, you has a success story cannot be told without mentioning the efforts of every one of you behind the scenes, both staff and students, for your sacrifices, dedication, and commitment to making this university an intellectual citadel of light for healthcare research and medicine. You as I am very proud of you. My child to the university is to remain pure and unadulterated in the provision of quality academic and intellectual discourse and in finding solutions to complex and far-reaching health crises across borders and disciplines. For there are fewer places better suited to do this than in universities such as you has. I envisage you to be greater, to be leaders in community medicine, and to solve problems in healthcare making discoveries in alternative medicine, sports and exercise medicine, and medical education. I'm looking forward to hearing, seeing and experiencing all your medical breakthroughs in glaucoma treatment and in cardiothoracic procedures. I want to hear 
that your products are making a positive impact and building a strong and distinctive healthcare workforce across the globe. Happy 10th anniversary celebrations. And on behalf of the government and people of Ghana, I wish you many more years of continued success. Ladies and gentlemen, government will not renege on its commitment to provide quality education and equal opportunities for future generations to have a good education. Regardless of the difficulties co currently confronting our nation due to the effects of COVID-19, which have been exacerbated even further by the consequences of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, government will continue to and remain responsible for the provision of free and quality basic and secondary education for all. <laughs> education should be a right of which all of Ghana's youth can avail. Today's youth running barefoot to school could be a future leader of business, industry, or government. Education is the equalizer of opportunity. I'm in this position as President of the Republic because of education. And I want every child to attend school, not just for what they learn in books, but for the life experiences that they will gain. I want each of them to look in the mirror in the morning, every morning, and know that they can achieve anything they dream of when they complete their studies. I want them to be confident that what they study is relevant to the demands of today and of tomorrow. I want every child to be comfortable in the knowledge that when they work hard, they will be as capable as anyone else in the world. And I want parents to look upon their children with pride as they watch them mature into self-confident adults. Education is indeed the key. Before I conclude, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to know that the university has overseen a smooth process of appointing a new vice chancellor and registrar who take over from the current vice chancellor and register, registrar whose respective terms of office end on the 31st of July this year. Vice Chancellor Professor John Ousu Japon and Registrar Dr. Cynthia Senakpeglu have done a yeoman's work by building the internal processes and structures which has provided a solid base for performance on all fronts. I'm hopeful and expectant that the incoming officers, Professor Lydia Aziato and Madame Ya Amakwa Opuni, will continue to build on the solid foundations to take you has to even greater heights. Warm congratulations to both of you. Indeed, you has is a great giant rising. May God bless the University of Health and Allied Sciences and us all. And may God bless our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Your Excellency. Shall we give him a big round of applause? Your Excellency, I would like to take a photo with you after the program. So please tell your protocol people. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The call will give us a little interlude whilst we, we have an anniversary kick. We would like the president to help us cut. I would like to invite uh, Professor Fred Binka to join us upstage with the Vice Chancellor and Chairman of Council to cut the cake for the occasion. We'll have a short interlude and then we'll do that.
song. Mr. President, can you give us a few steps, please? concert on Sunday at 6 p.m. in the Kofi Anyedoho Auditorium. You are all invited to attend. Your Excellency, thank you so much for the honors and thank you for being so down to earth, to, on, uh, down to earth and always indulging us um, when we demand all these things from you. Thank you very much. Um, I need to do some acknowledgement, but um, I don't want to stand the risk of leaving anybody out. We have very eminent people in the person of the President, His Excellency himself, who has joined us. We have our Ministers of State, we have the Regional Minister, we have our Chairman of the VCG Ghana, we have our founding fathers, Professor Fred Binka, Professor Kofi Anidoho, our Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Harry Tagbo. All our council members are represented here. Togbio Mamao from the Regional House of Chief are also here. All our MCs, MPs, and MCs are here. Um, Honorable Ablaqua is a, a fixture in our programs, and we are always delighted to have it. We have all our sponsors, GCB Ghana, the whole team is here. And um, some other banks that uh, Fidelity and um, Zenith Bank are all here, all our sponsors are here. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to acknowledge all of you as very important guests and part of this celebration. And I hope that you have been duly acknowledged. Thank you very much. We, the only announcement we have is that um, after the program, we will have a commissioning of the Soccer Day Hall of Residence. His Excellency will commission the hall and inspect the China Phase Two project that is ongoing. After that, we will all um, go to the Vice Chancellor's Lodge on the hill near Sky Plus. All of us, all the invited guests, we have catered for you at that residence. And please don't be in a hurry to go away. We don't want to waste the food. We want all of you to be there. The president will dine with us. So like the biblical passage, you should be there. Otherwise, you'll miss your calling to heaven. 
So please, let's go there and keep the, the president company as he dines with us. Togbio Mamao, we will all go to the vice chancellor's residence after the commissioning. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the close of our program. I've just been alerted that there will be a photo session in the front here. All our um, founding fathers and the incoming uh, officers will, will join us here as we take a, a photograph with the president. I have already booked my, my space, so thank you very much. So um, on this note, Your Excellency, thank you for coming all the way from Accra, I understand you have a lot of engagements, but like I said, you are an avid supporter of UHAS. Every single time we have um, called you to come, you have always been here. I know our colleagues are jealous, very, very jealous of that. We are happy they are jealous, because in August, come August, you will come again and inaugurate um, help with the, the investiture of our new offices. So we thank you, we thank you and your team your entire team for being here. I wish to thank the chairman of the University Council, His Lordship Justice Victor Jones Maulum Doche, for being in the seat and always, always guiding our process. We thank the Honorable Deputy Minister for coming in and helping with the proceedings. I wish to thank Togbio Mamao, all of you, the president of the Volta Regional House of Chiefs, Togbi Teprehodo, and all the members, the past members of council and the interim members of council as well for coming to join us. Ladies and gentlemen, if I have not mentioned you specifically, it, it is not intentional. It is just for want and lack of time. I thank all of you for making time out of your heavy schedules to be with us. Dr. John Tampuri, thank you for always being a partner to UHAS. An honorable member of Parliament Hall Central, Honorable Podo, thank you for your presence here. I wish to thank the choir also for always preparing for our programs. I wish to thank the 10th Anniversary Implementation Committee it was chaired by Professor Seto Usweje and all his team members for putting together all the programs leading to this grand DEBA. I wish to thank the ICT team. I think we have done very well. We didn't hear any ping, 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 ping in the microphone. And I want to acknowledge their effort and time for all the work that they have put in. I thank all our entertainers, the Kekeli group, and all our sponsors, GCB, Fidelity Bank, Zenith Bank, and all the other banks that help us. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, media men and women, convocation and staff of UHAS, thank you so much. If you hear the cock crow, these days the cock does not crow. If you hear the cock crowing, if you hear the cock crow, it is UHAS that is saying thank you. Your Excellency, Akpenao, Akpenao Kakaka. The amount of Kakaka indicates the amount of gratitude that we, we show. So Akpenao, please stop me as I'm going. Akpenao Kakaka 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 Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We will invite the chairman of council to give us this closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. I, I believe you don't live where the cock lives. That's why you don't hear it crow. His <laughs> Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, I, I don't have much to say because when we were growing up, we were told that when you have a ripe plantain, whether cooked or boiled, you don't need to garnish it to enjoy it. 
all the species, all the speeches have been quite simple and straight to the point. And the only thing I can gather out from it is that with determination and perseverance, you can surmount all difficulties when you apply yourself to the tax. And that is what has brought you has this far. And I would urge that another lesson from this you has story is that development projects like this is a relay. One person starts and hands over the baton and then you continue to the best of your ability. And I will urge the incoming officers to also ascribe to do their best as the first batch and the second batch have done. Thereby, we will build a very strong institution known as UHAS. It is also gratifying that the president despite the economic difficulties we are going through, has still believes in quality free education. And I'm urging the leaders and managers of this institution to ensure that the resources being pumped by governments into education do not go down the drain. And we should all be each other's keeper. Thank you very much for listening to us. We will do the anthem, the UHAS anthem, and then we'll take the photos quickly and enable Your Excellency to take his leave. Shall we rise as we do the UHAS anthem, please? Page five of the program, page five. Please sing with us.
Excellency, this is Professor Margaret Japa, the one who donated all her money for the fund. She will give us the closing prayer. Shall we pray? Indeed, today is a day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Our Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you for how far you have brought us. You started with us 10 years ago, and thus far have you brought us. What more can we say, Lord, but thank you? We thank you for beautiful weather. We thank you for having brought all our colleagues and friends from far and near. Thank you especially for bringing our president to us. We commit the rest of the activities into your hands, Lord. We ask that you be with us as you have started with us and end with us successfully. And as our colleagues go back home, you would also take them safely. We thank you that you have heard us. In Jesus' name, amen. Please take your seats. We will do a little photograph and then um, we will process out.